Yake aya yaksatini yohan. A tlain siu dak nastan aya ya ak kon ani kach. A datawe yitach watank. Yet atk wushach it. Tesach tua ushko ka hiti ka de awe. Ya kut ka di. A khaya akach. A kach te hait. Wasa atka kone. Ayanach yanat ein ayasengit ani. A kawe kos. Yega hisitin. Ya ayanach tetsin awe kil ja a train ha ani kuk. Ya ach ish has ani. Yupik has a ani ka aye wuti in kil ja. Ach a awe. Kone. Ya an wushaku. Ya has to hiti aya. A data way you took tongue to clear the gay day shoe. We cut wush a hit. Deh a hit uch chaos in me. Deh nach a hour has our jock. Gosh, Kachin talk shoe with you can cheat cock. Aye would he and so. We cut cardy. Cut wush a hit. Chuck on a hairy seal, a plain seal. Chuck away seal, dark was tunch, a cook, a plain seal, a yah. One for names where yeas couldn't teeny, a yah has a cow, a yah, a yah has cool. Ah, Kadak seal for a tachodak. Kaka, piety, a joy set kinnak at deep to oo, a on a cook. Jagok sa away your hand after us. Seen it to ye tea. Cleche, cleche ye tea. Ya ye gay has a cannon, share yaka quoti, cock of dust. Ah, ya Hagen wag. Clash a scary schoon, a yeek ye has woodian. Has a cow, a ark has to eat away a cow with oozy, has to yuk a tongue. Joy has to jeet aya, has our set. Ya ha yu khatangi ka ha kusti. Kesh has tu wut an yu. Ya ak ish. Po awe. Asa wu jak. A joya ka wa ak. Du dak awe du kakh awe desh. Ak awe shkun. A dat ki khasati. Just a dat ki. Jaan ko a. Asa ka wa ak awe has du da it has ju de nuk. Ach o aad su kell has du aani kuchte has wu da aad. Has du daad aya yu tach wu tang. Has du kach aya yu tach wu tang. Aqa yu haan haav gijin nei. Kuchte ya nas akha yu khatangi. Ha jih. A jo each tu ya ke ya ghe ha ya ti wu jin. Gun chi sha khaiti sa aachi. Uh, it's great to see everybody. Uh, I guess you want to tell me anything that I was talking about? And I'll go over it all. But I just like to sort of see what we got, just see where we're at. Do a little listening exercises at the beginning. Something from Haynes and Sitka. And um, let's see, lots of rain. Lots of rain. Uh -huh. Two houses, I think I heard in there somewhere, or two buildings maybe, maybe two buildings, two houses. At Kusha Hit, we know that. Kusha Hit is a, to slip. <clears throat> it also would be for the land to slide. So and there's a couple different, you could say Kusha Hit, like it slid, and then you, you say Kutk is the land, the earth, the soil. Uh, you could also say Kadi. So Kadi is a slide. So Te Kadi would be a rock slide. It happened all the time up on the mountains. Glade Kadi would be what? An avalanche, right? So we've got words for these. And then Wushikit is sometimes talked about when the whole, because it's kind of, but when you've lived in a certain place for, Forever, I think these guys told me that Klinget comes from 
Hebrew. I've just been thinking about this whole time. I was like, because I had just given this lecture, and I was feeling really good about just connecting with people, and then these guys came and told me, I was like, bro, it's like 17,000 years right here, same language. So, no, but if you've been in one place for so long, you've seen all of these changes. So we have lots of stories. Like if you go look through the De Laguna stuff, there's stories about these huge mudslides and there's stories about all kinds of like these catastrophes that do happen. But when it starts to rain like this, I just, I worry. Um, what else was I talking about? <clears throat> yeah, like, so I'm glad we're together, right? So yeah, I said I worry because the the world is getting warmer. As it gets warmer, <clears throat> stronger storms. Anybody else had a thought? I thought I heard. I thought I heard something about um, something wasn't good. Was that I worry? Yeah. Well, um, I th I think I said a dot quite a bit. I, th I think about it. A kach you took as I'm hoping for something or someone. Um, and so maybe I'll, I'll start a little, start a list again of things. Uh, and then I'll put some notes up so that we can have these things. Let's see. There's something about a boat too, I think. Uh, boat sinking or boat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wusatak. So, um, Wushachit <clears throat> is like slip or slide. And then, uh, blank. Kadi is like, um, well, we'll put Teh in there. Kadi is a rock slide. Great Kadi is an avalanche. And then um, I was talking about the world is getting so Yana Tain. Something about red clothes too, I think I heard. Getting up. Yeah, orange shirt. Oh, orange shirt. Yeah, so let's walk uh, walk through. I did get to that part. So I was saying like it gets warmer and these things are getting there just seem to be happening more, more and more rain, lots of rain. There was a slide here the other day. Uh, there was a slide, um, a big one, a couple of years ago in Haynes. Another big one four or five years ago in Sitka that took out houses, took out people. Bigger storms, Kitja uh, is a storm. And that they were hitting my father's people's lands, the Yupik, uh, really hard. And then there was a flood, so flood would be Wushaku. And then Wusitak would be uh, it sank. But from a, there's all these things from a Shingit perspective too. Like sometimes that could mean like a boat sinks, like it just happens, right? But it could also mean like it's it's not usually underwater, but now it's underwater. Like when you see like floods and you see like cars where you know the water covers it, you, that could be Wusitak or for a house. Like, because sometimes the water comes over it, and it's not like we don't understand how that works, but that's how we think about it and talk about it. Uh, so, wusatach is for something to sink. And if you said a person, wusatach, how do you think people would interpret that? Drown. Drown. Right. And there's another com more complicated, much more complicated way to say drown, uh, but this is one right here. That's, a, that's probably the most common way that I've heard it. Uh, so I was talking about these houses getting taken out, people getting killed, and how that's uh, very sad. And then I started talking about the next couple of days, people will be wearing orange shirts. Anything else from this kind of part of the conversation, or the talk? I don't know, maybe it was the part before, but I thought I heard like, uh, or something like both of them. Yeah. And then, but like to me that means like they died or killed or something. Yes. So, uh, is how you talk about people. So you'd say dach, dach. I think those are both fine. Um, 
So it killed two people. And that could also be someone, like they, third person, they killed two people. Uh, and then, yeah, so then I was talking about the orange shirts and why we wear them. Uh, it's because a lot of our ancestors were brought to these terrible schools uh, where people tried uh, so in these places they tried to wash it's like they tried to wash the language out of their mouths and then they they ripped it out of their hands our way of life our language uh, these are places of violence these are places of uh, horrible things uh, I, my father went to one of these schools so it's not like it was so long ago uh, and he used to get beat up all the time because he tried to protect his sister and um, and then uh, that what things that would happen there's all kinds of things that happen kids didn't come home there's lots of stories of people uh, it, it's a rough thing to say but you'd say just a um, they're just a child, but still they they touched all over their body, right? And so this is how we talk about these types of things happening. They are rough things. They are difficult topics. It's also as you start to shift seasons and get darker and get lots of rain, just like make sure you're practicing self-care. Make sure that you're finding ways to laugh, you're finding ways to heal, but that you're also finding ways to face some of this stuff because it's also getting into Kuik season. So that means we we have methods of letting go of grief. And that's not doesn't mean you just get over it, but at some point you can recognize that if you carry this stuff around too much, it can weigh you down. So we give it, we give our sorrow, we give our pain, we give our suffering to our ancestors, which might seem like in conflict with ways of that you might think, because like, wait, I, but I love my ancestors, but then they love us. And so sometimes they come and we can give them these burdens and they can you know, and we'll get to this concept we were talking about right before we hit the recording as well. Um, which was, you know, and so I'm glad that we're working together. Like here we are, despite all of these attempts to like annihilate languages and destroy peoples and their ways of life, like we have survived, we have remained, we're gaining in numbers of Klingit speakers, we're gaining in numbers of people who understand how to do cultural things, our artworks, our performances, all these different things. So I thought I'd share uh, a concept that is a spiritual concept. And so we're going to talk about this for a second. Uh, how do Klingit, how does the language refer to some of these things? And there's these related concepts uh, that I tried to put into the dictionary. And we'll start with this one. Here I say, tu wu. Tu wu. Tu wu. So you can say ach tu wu. Ach tu wu. I tu wu. Du tu wu. So this is your mind, your thoughts, your feelings, your intentions, your desires. And so there are ways to say things. Like remember we were talking just the other day about wa ekhu'a, right? So this is how I could bounce a question right over to you. Someone asks me a question, I can answer it and look at you and say, what ekhu'a, and I'm telling you it's your turn to answer that question. But when I was working with these two elders whose voices we're going to listen to in a minute, I'd ask them all kinds of stuff about translations, and we're very difficult things going from English to Shinget and then Shinget to English, including speakers who were born in the mid to late 1800s, uh, and who spoke very fast, with very complex grammar and subject matter. So when one of them would translate, if they wanted to say, what do you think about it? Right, so here's another nice 
phrase to learn. And let me switch documents real quick. So we said um, we did wa a right? So wa a So this just bounces this thing that you're talking about over to the next person. But then you can, there's this different thing, which is wa sa i tu wuch. So wa sa i tu wuch. This is saying, how do you feel about it? What do you think about it? Right? And so there's a lot of different ways to sort of use this in context. It's a very short phrase. Uh, it can use, be used for a lot of different things. So for example, if we're just sort of sharing, if we're all speaking Klingit and we're sharing our feelings about something, like, what do you think about what happened? And I might sort of give my opinion on it and say, and I'm asking you to share your thoughts on it. So the way I was first picking up this one was when one of the elders would translate something and they would look to the other one and say, which what they're communicating in that moment is, do you have a different thought or do you agree? How do you feel about that? And then they would either agree or maybe offer a different thought. It was really fun to bounce things off of those two because they, their names were um, Kachwan Ish, George Davis, and Shekshani, March Dudson. And they taught me a ton. We got together every Friday for about three years. It was just wonderful. They were just such amazing, incredible folks. So Wasa Itu Wuch is a good one to know. And then we get into, uh, we're going to jump down a little bit, actually. And this one is Yakwaheyaku. So when you see this long uh, line in front of it, um, it means there needs to be a noun before it. It needs to have a noun that it belongs to. This could be a, e, du. It could be a. You'll hear a a lot. It's spirit. So this is the living spirit inside of all things. Rock, tree, salmon, dog, you, me. This is different than tuwu. Tuwu is a consciousness. Yakwaheku is something a little bit different, right? No matter what you believe, how you believe, we're just talking about the way that the Thlingit language looks at this stuff historically. And then this is also the thing that leaves when people pass away. And there's different places that that thing can go depending on how things sort of are rolling through in life. Uh, this is when you're talking to the spirit of something, like when you talk to a tree before you cut it down, talk to some medicine before you harvest it, you're talking to its yakwaheyaku. It does come from a verb, it is very complicated, but there's this verb, ha, a verb root, which means basically to move without being seen. But it's very, there's, it's one of these ones where like you can build a hundred different verbs out of this ha thing. You get photograph, movie, image, shadow, ghost, all of these things come out of that. And so it has to do with this, it's something that moves around and this basically is saying it's going this move this moving around thing is going to be removed in the future so it's, it's a complicated concept uh, when we get into more of the grammar stuff you can see and you could look it up in this dictionary it shows you all the pieces and some of them are estimations they're just guesses because some of the stuff does get very complicated so similar, we'll jump down and we'll do yek last. So the next one, well, a lot of us, we're going to cover, um, let me jump over back to the notes. Because there are these two related concepts I also want to make sure that we uh, grasp. And you have kwan and ku'u. What are these things and what is the difference? They're not the same thing. Let 
Anybody know either one of them? Thoughts on them? It's not a right or wrong thing. Man or people, or is that without the underline? Oh, oh whoops. <laughs> Needs an underline. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, Ku'u, yeah, people. That's what Ku'u is, is people. This comes from a verb, which means to kind of own or use land, or maybe purchase land, depending on how you're looking at it. So like Ku'u, if you say, Ya Ku'u, I live here, I reside here, it probably has something to do with like owning, you know, having something that's kind of yours there in that space. But it means people. So, for example, we live in this place, Ka'ak Kwan Ani. It gets a little complicated. How do you how do you then talk about an entire place like Juno, which is a huge it's big, right? Juno goes 30 miles that way, it goes 10 miles that way. We also have Douglas, right? But like a long time ago, you had place names that really were very specific sort of spots. You didn't always have this, we're in this, you're, you're in specific places. But you could still be an Ak Kwan Ani, which is now getting into a larger, kind of a state within the nation type of a thing. But I would say Ak is the primary sort of place name of this whole area where the Ak Kwan are. So when you have Kwan, there have been theories that it comes from Ku'u An, which would make sense in terms of how the language likes to contract and as far as meanings go. But Kwan, in my mind, is the ancestral people of a place. That means this is their home, this is their land, and from a Shinget perspective, this is Ak Kwan Ani. I could live here for another 50 years, and even if I did a whole bunch of, no matter what I did, I would not be Ak Kwan. I mean, they could give me, an, if, if they gave someone a name, then they, that person is Ak Kwan. That's how that stuff kind of works. Also, it gets a little bit complicated. If you are, let's say, for example, you're a Wushkitan, right? You have a Wushkitan name, you're born Wushkitan, that's what you are. And if you say, I'm Wushkitan and I'm from Ak, our people are from Burners Bay, whatever your story is, right? You just know your lineage, and that's where you're from. But if you find out your name comes from this other house that's over in Cake, a Kaykh Kwan even if you've never been there. So that's what I was taught, is you are the Kwan that your name comes from. It gets a little complicated, and I'm not going to tell you how to say it or that you're doing anything wrong, but that's just things that I've been told. So the Kwan is, should be you. So this, this gets a little interesting. So if you want to say, if you are... <clears throat> from a different place, and you are not sort of connected to the people of Ak Kwan directly through your lineage, or you haven't been named, and you lived here, you could say Ak Ku'u, the people of Ak. And that's just all the people who live here. So Ku'u and Kwan aren't the same. Kwan is the ancestral people. In a related concept, to take it it's so sort of another connected thing. I would say what can you folks tell me about these two terms? Similar, related, but not the same thing. Shawa did name. Is that first one honorable people? Yeah. I, I guess I, I didn't realize there was an A in, in front of it. I thought it was Shia Wudenake, but it's Shia Awudenake. Shia Wudenake, but it goes, it goes like Shia Wudenake. Oh, it kind of like blends. Okay. It kind of blend a little bit. And I'm sure there's lots of people who just say Shia Wudenake, right? It just, it's only, there's a whole bunch of these things that are used so much, so often for so long that they do smoosh together a lot. Oh. 
Uh, isn't it also self-respecting people? That's right. So it is literally self-respecting <coughs> people. So there is a verb, atya awane is the noun, or you could say, iya ayahwane, I respect you. So Shawadineki is honorable people, literally self-respecting people. What about Anyat Kisani or Anyat Kusani? Like children of the land. People of the land, noble children of the land. Okay, six. Okay, I'm taking note of when the air thing turns on in here. So I'm trying to get. We're going to build a different classroom that has a microphone on the ceiling. I don't want it blowing air onto the microphone. Okay. Um, how are these similar and how are they different? Mm. Both are ya'at wuna, showing respect to the people and where they come from. Yeah, they're both respectful terms. Crowd in general, but then when you get to the other one, we're talking about like the Quan. Yes. So Shawadanek, it could be any, like anybody. It's just a nice thing to say to everybody. Right? And especially these are really good things to use in oratory. Right? And there's other steps. We'll talk about those other steps later when you start calling out the kinship and the clans and stuff. The way I was taught is when you say Anyat Kusani or Anyat Kisani, which me really means little children of the village. That's how I would interpret that literally. This is the high caste people, the leadership of the clans that are of the Quan. So you're not Historically, if you, if you say Anyat Kusani, you're not talking to everybody. You say, hey, you Akkwan leaders right there, you guys. Because, and we did have these, you know, it gets a little bit sensitive, I know that. But we did have these structures and systems, and I know sometimes it's used in unhealthy ways these days. Uh, but if you had a strong lineage, you, know, you knew who, you know, you were Anyadi, you were Anyadki. Um, okay. That, okay, let's go back. We got one more to do, or two. So then this gets us to, uh, what do I say? Kwani. 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 So this is often used for non-human things, and you are addressing the spirits of them Get, this is a little bit of a complicated concept. For example, if I say Asquani, what I'm talking to is the tree people. So the way I think of Kwani is we got a bunch of stories. Here's the sort of basic mechanism. Here's a person. They do something to offend this animal. That they should know way better than to do that. They say something bad to it. They they are eating fish and they throw it because they're, you know, they don't bring the bones all the way down back to the water. They don't turn the deer, you know, facing back to the forest. Whatever the things are, they don't. They offend it somehow. So then then they're walking through the forest and they encounter someone who's like, hey, come with me, and they do, even if it's just ridiculous. Like, come, let's go get married, right? And they do, because there's some they're getting into their mind. There's some magic that goes on. And they look just like people, right? Or there's stories about when animals would, oh, there's a place here. I'll take it to a place. I gotta, where I gotta find out. What's this place called? I'm gonna find it. Oh, I know how to find it. So 
So let's go, we'll do it this way. Here's how I'll explain this a little bit more. So here we are, there's Huna, we're going to back out of Huna, and we're going to go, so here's Tinaqi, this Huna. If you zoom way in here, okay, so we there's Huna, Tinaqi, and you have these long, what we probably call Nakh, Nakh, it's a uh, long, narrow place, it's steep. And if you look, I think it's right here. You see how close these bodies of water get? A teeny, a teeny. A little bit of land right in between them. That place is called Keet Guni. What might that, how could we interpret that? Keet Guni. Killer whale. Something. Goon, on goon. It's fresh water, right? Uh, there's, okay. Or is that different? There's goon, goon, and goon. So, oh, oh, that makes sense, yeah. Of course, right? Okay, hold on. Back, back to here. Today's lesson is on homonyms. Okay, so let's go find goon. So we do have, uh, I think there's one down here. No. Uh, they're all in the same spot. Okay, there's goon, which is gold. Goon, which is a portage or an isthmus. I don't know how to say it. Is, do you do the TH? And then there should be one right here, which is a spring. So there are three. Goon, goon, goon. So the low tone one is where you're going to get this spring of water. Right. This is, according to the, the stories, this is what we are supposed to drink. When we switch to pipes, that's when people started getting sick a lot. Uh, every village usually had a goon near it. High tone goon, standalone noun, gold or the color gold. Goon yachati. This long dash means. It needs to belong to something, just like the word underneath it, right? It, need, it's, it, can't, it shouldn't be standing alone. So this is a portage or a passage. Keet Goonie. Not little, it's just Kilo Whale Passage. Possessive, does it, the eye is it possessive yeah. over there? Uh, <clears throat> When it comes to place names, it's pretty much always a relationship, not a possession. So the way I heard about this place is someone said, if you were standing, there's like a little, I don't, I've never been there, so I don't know, but there's like a hill or a mountain somewhere. And you would see killer whales, so you'd see a pot of killer whales going, and all of a sudden you wouldn't see them, and they'd be going this way. Then you wouldn't see them, but then if you're standing in the right spot, you'll see them on this side. So this place is called Keet Guni. And I've heard two theories. I believe both of them. This is how I roll. Theory number one. There's a hole under the ground in the water. And they swim through the hole. What's that second one? They walk like a person. Yeah, take their skin off and walk like a person right over the top of it. I'm fine with that. It does not violate my sense of reality whatsoever. I haven't seen it, but if I saw it, I'd be like, yep, they told me. <laughs> so, so are there, I'm guessing, are there multiple Kikuni places? 
there, well, there's a bunch of Goonie place, but I'm sure that there are, right? So this is the one, I just remember, it's one of these, sometimes there's just certain things that come up uh, a lot, right? And so it, it's just interesting when the more, the more you use the language, more you learn it. Like sometimes there's a concept that'll come up and then it'll come up again and it'll come up again. And then for me, like that spiritual radar starts going, I was like, I'm supposed to know about the Keith Green. I just start thinking about that kind of stuff. And so this brings us back to this. So Kwani is when you're talking about non-human things that have become human, even if it's temporarily, or you're talking to them as if they're a human. And this is, this is, this is, some people don't like this, I understand. Some people, it violates their own spiritual beliefs. And there's a whole bunch of people who came here and told us to knock it off. But I say, hey, you knock your stuff off. Well, you don't have to actually, but if you want me to stop, you, everybody stops. Or everybody could just think what they want to, right? So for the Kwani, even if you don't believe that a killer whale can take its skin off and walk across a thing, which it can, um, you can talk to a tree as if it's a person. When would you do that? Right before you cut it down. Some of these things, I think, are fundamental principles in Shingi Tundatani. There's a spirit in everything, so we respect everything. Some people might say, that's silly to talk to a tree. And we say, that's silly to disrespect a tree, because next thing you know, you're cutting them all down. Just like, um, we'll try to do on Gantak. So that's Kwani, though. Because if you said, Kushta Kwani Khutu Wagat, Right. So this is there's a whole bunch of cases that we're gonna see where as we learn for okay, as we learn Klingen, there's sometimes like, yeah, when you put these words together, that's what they mean. So then I usually call that like a literal interpretation. But then sometimes I say, but what it means is this, right? And this this happens all the time. Every Every culture, every language has all these different things, right? So if I said, Kushta, Kwani, Khut, Uwakut. And I'll give you another one. We'll do one at a time. Can you repeat or, or put the phrase here, what you would say? Which one? You just said a, like a phrase earlier, what you would say. You're talking to the, to the tree or. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can, um, let me pull up a. Uh, might take me a minute to find it. Where was it? Okay. Uh, I might have to look for it on the break. Okay, so if I were to say, Kushtakwani Khut Uwakut, how do you interpret that? Interpreters. Uh, let's see, um, maybe the land otter or river otter people. Uh, are walking among is that among or with among or with with something so the walking among I guess or let's see who are good so uh, among us uh, walking no they it's a third person okay <clears throat> they yeah they they went among the land otter people <clears throat> so there's that goes here what is hoot I don't know if I've seen that one before. Yeah, so uh, who is among, and then you could say who oh, okay. yeah. So like, you arrive. Like who like, who, I know that, okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. You can, there's that at to arrive, right? And we haven't, we're gonna do a whole bunch of stuff with these, right? So it's okay if you don't, you know, you'll start to see them though. 
Oh, there's that T one. There's day. There's duck. Uh, for example, there was a there was a child I'm related to who was at the language nest pouting to a dose. And uh, the elder looks at Keshte Toashko Kachutukuti. They don't want to be among the people. Right? And that just means they just want to sit over there and pout. Which, you know. And then later I said, oh, Kachutukuti came among the people. So now we've got they went among the land otter people. That's the literal interpretation. What does that mean? They were stolen or? That's it. Yeah, they were taken. Yeah. Turn, Got him. Turned into a land otter, maybe right. themselves. <laughs> so sometimes we have ways of talking way around things, and that one is because it's scary. But here's a similar, and we got the Kwani in there, see? They, they're, they're among the land otter people. That means, you know, we got to go get them back. What about Seke Dichut Uwakut? The beaver. They went among the beaver. There you go. Now, what does that mean? Not the beaver people. Did no, so the beavers didn't get them. Yeah. Um, it's like a mega bonus round right now. Is it? They got pulled under the water. They They're going to That's it. Hunting. So some of these are they like cultural idioms. Like you gotta there's certain ways you communicate things. Some of this comes back to other fundamental Shanghai ways of thinking, which is long time ago people didn't say, I'm gonna trap some beaver, because that's disrespecting the beaver. And Everything understands Shlinget on the land. So the beaver's like, okay. later, pal. And it's also, you're not being a humble human being. You're just saying, like, I'll go get them. Right? So there's this, all these things are in balance all the time. Which brings us back to Yake. You always say, Yake. 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 Not telling anybody what to believe. But the Shinget way of thinking. Everybody has a Yakwaheyaku. Everything has a Yakwaheyaku. When you when you pass away, it could go multiple places, depending on how your life went. It could go to Dachanku, which is like the happy that's the that's the goes back to the interior, is in a happy place. And it's kind of done. That spirit might be done with all of its work in the world. Dechanku. Or it's also called Dechanku. And it means like this place that we know is in the interior. And that's why they say walked into the forest. It's not literally into the woods. It's a Dechde Wugud. I know some people like to say it's not a Shinget phrase, but it is. Dechde Wugud is what you would say. If you find yourself on the other side and you don't know what to do, go inland. That's what I was told. Some of them, if they die a violent death through war or through, uh, unfortunately, suicide, they go to Kiwa. So this, this is, we're taking this unexpected turn into like some of these deeper concepts, which I, I do think are important. So there's this term, anybody heard this term, kiwa? This is an important one. So we'll start with kiwa on its own. It is way up high. So you've got uh, kinde is upwards, achkina is above me, diki is way up high, kiwa is as high as it gets. Kawiyuk is into space, into this unknown sort of thing. Kiwa is way up there. This is a Shingit concept. I don't think anybody bothered to translate this. They just took Diki and Diyi and they translated Biblical. 
things above and below. Kiwakawu are the heavenly people. When you see northern lights, sometimes you're seeing them. These are people who died in war, took their own lives. I do think we should adopt a term which would be kiwasha for missing and murdered indigenous women because it's, it's a violent thing that's happening to us still. Kiwakawu kechechi, kechechi, I think there should be kechechi, is the shadow of the heavenly people. And that's one of our terms for the eclipse, especially of the moon, but maybe the sun too. Uh, meteors are called kiwakadzuna or zunei. So it's the missile of the heavenly people. Uh, and we would make knives out of those things. Pre-contacts, and then kiwakawu yahai, the image of the heavenly people is our word for autism, or these various sort of spectrums of things in terms of just where folks are with some of their um, mental capacities. So these are interrelated concepts, and it comes back to yake. Because we were talking about Sayek and the things, the power of that name and, and what it means. So when we get back to Yake, this is a spirit helper, usually of an Icht. So the Icht is a medicine person who can communicate beyond the known world. So even all this stuff that we know and is still documented, then there's a whole other realm, which the Icht knows about. The yake is the one that shows up. And usually, sometimes there were certain ones, like this thing that looked like a deer to them, or this thing that looked like this to them, and they would talk to them, right? And they were the only ones who knew how to do that. Other people couldn't do it. Like you'd see, th and these things might look really scary to somebody, which is probably why a lot of people don't talk about it a whole lot. Uh, generally, don't go it's, don't go chakugi, don't just go any old way into this type of knowledge. It is sensitive stuff, but I do think it's stuff that if we just talk about it a little bit more, it becomes less. Uh, I think it's been made very scary by colonialism, which tried to squash all of this information from our knowledge and our well-being, and I think it's, it's okay, it's fine. Uh, there was, yeah, there's the ikht in the nakutsati, Nakutsati is someone who uses understanding of spiritual knowledge and power to harm people. And an ikht is someone who uses that knowledge to help people and that power. But that's what, and there's a yek uti is a type of dance, which, like it's called a spirit imitation dance. And they, they usually, they'll sing a yek song. So there's yek dashi, which would be, most clans have sets of songs. Some of them are shakal which is call and response back and forth to the other clan. They're called love songs in English. Other ones, there's cry songs, ach dashi, then there's yek dashi. The yek dashi uh, usually have a very different drum pattern. They have very long, complicated uh, patterns of lyrics and melodies, and there's often someone dancing behind a blanket with a shakiat on. And then they might come up, and, down, and you only see the shakiat behind the blanket. Also at Kuik, if it gets to be about three in the morning, you should sing a yek dashi. Anybody know what? Is it because the, the other the other um, people that have passed away or, or something is are 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 there or coming down and you're singing to them maybe or is it is so it, you sing gach like so for any type of klinget ceremony as I was taught is you start with gach dashi no matter what it is because you want people to always have chances to release some grief you might be raising a totem pole. Yeah, so but I think there should be before you do that. 
so people have a chance to say, I don't know. Oh, was there a Can you say that again? Yes. So I, even if you're having a house dedication, if you're having a totem pole raising, if you're having, if you're bringing some element of Tlingit cultural protocol in, you should have Qah Dashi at the beginning. Like, let's say we built a, we built a longhouse out here and we're going to have a celebration for it. The first thing that we should do is have Qah Dashi because we might say, think about the people who aren't here to see this. Maybe I'm feeling sad because I think, boy, I wish Richard and Nora were here to see us open this bill. And I might feel sad because I think, boy, I, whatever, you, you give people opportunities to let go of grief and pain and suffering and anger so that you can have a really good time. That's like the, one of the primary structures of Tlingit ceremonies. You have yek dashi if your ceremonies start to happen, like we're starting getting close to the sun rising. Those ravens are usually the first ones to get up. And if you're up, if the people are up and moving around before the ravens, we need to sing a song so that they know what's going on. That's what that's how it was explained to me. Or else something something bad might happen. And it's a specific song or or, or it's a spirit song. It's, it's, it's a specific spirit song that there's not any song. It's it not the same be. song. But every clan has a set of yek <clears throat> dashi mm -hmm. they sing. And then the Icht also had their own songs. I don't know if we know very many of those these days. And that was at 3 o'clock specifically. I remember that's that happening. They, that's what they tell me. Yeah, they say. But maybe that's just the time that people have chosen. Because we just would probably look outside and be like, ooh, that sun's going to come up. Yeah. I mean, if it was if we did a ceremony in June, we'd probably do it at 1 in the morning. <laughs> okay. Okay, any other thoughts? And that was a lot to, uh, I think it's good to do this stuff, like just to talk, uh, like root the language in, it's not just the language, it's the shingitundatani, right? It's the way of thinking. So uh, anything else? We'll take a break and we'll come back and do. I think Crystal has her hand up there. Though. Oh yeah, and Kauke, okay, your hand is up. Yeah, I was wondering if you could add to the notes, the um, some of the things you said about um, you said something like the cut thing it on something and then um the uh uh inland place name and the um kiwa those terms mm -hmm. Okay, uh, take five, come back, and we'll get back into our little readings and think it. Okay, gonna cheese. So we had a couple of questions on the break, and uh, one, I will give you the opportunity to answer it yourself, uh, which is what I mean by that. I think I said for the final there'll be a translation exercise. So I'm gonna post on our class page this thing, um, what you would say to the tree people before you cut a tree down. As much as I, you can read it, 
And if, you, if you're going to go cut down a tree, you can read it right now. So don't stress out. But there won't be a translation there because that's going to be your job. And we'll check in throughout. We'll all do it together. But I like to give, I like to give you folks stuff like this and say, okay, go find it. Get into the stuff. Get into the weeds. <laughs> Get into the... Okay, never mind. <laughs> so the second question was, is there a way to sort of respectfully talk about people disappearing or dying off? And that gets us to here. Anybody recognize that? We're going to open the box of knowledge. Yep. So, to hate the shukach tutan, we're going to open a hinged container again. Hey, ya kuskate the kate, this box of knowledge that's right here. Hajik. What's that part? Hajik. In our hand. In our possession, anak. If you speak Yupik or Anupiak, that is poop in their language. <laughs> in ours. Um, is this like to leave the to hand? Leave something behind, right? Like uh, David, uh, King JC used to say, Jehwanak Achnigu. Like I let go of my pain. Yes. Yeah, so uh, jinak is the command form for let it go. So that's what Elsa would sing uh, if she was on the mountains here. Uh, so jinak, and those are related, I think. Anak, um, but this this one here, this one we would have a long dash in front of it. So I could say, wanak say achnak yigud. Why did you leave me behind, right? Or I say to my kids all the time, don't walk away from your lunchbox. Don't leave it behind. Because there's a bunch of times we drive to school like, I forgot my, but anak means to leave it behind. Then we got has how de What this means is a group of things moved in a mass all together. So there's a, you could say anak has kau eat, and people would, or you could say ah has kau eat. And I, the only two things you'd be saying is they all got up and left and left this behind. They all got up and left and just took off. But those are roundabout ways of saying they're all gone now. So this is literally saying, we will again open this wisdom container that they died off from, and now it's in our possession. Like all that stuff is compacted into that beautiful phrase, which was said by Kitchnach, George Davis, who is a different George Davis than the one that I often talked about that I worked with. Um, and that's how you could say, so you, you instead of a nuk, I would say, ah, A, A, underline X, has kau dekid. So, ah is a contraction of adach, away from it, right? Ah, has kau dekid. Okay, so a lot of this stuff probably taxes our brains, so then we, I gotta share, I gotta share this thing with you folks. It's just one of my favorite little clips. Ever. 40 seconds left. An empty skull would be the Shakahago. Mm -hmm. It the Shakahago. Empty skull. Oh. Shakahago. No brains in it. But right, but with your, all your brains and everything, it's shakanuko. <laughs> <laughs> when your brains are all in there. 
Shakahagu and Shakanuhu. So Shakanuhu would be a skull. It's attached, it's got everything in there. And Shakahagu, the, the, the hawk part has to do with drying out. It's all dried up, like, a, like an empty shell on the beach, like a clam shell. Okay. So, you ain't got no Shakahagu. So another question that came up on the break is, what's a classifier? Anybody, what is a classifier? Anybody tell me, tell me anything that you can about a classifier. And then we'll do something a little different. Like a category? Yep, categorizes, certainly does that. Anybody got anything else? right before the verb root. Every verb has to have one. Doesn't have one, can't be a verb. Every verb must have a root and a classifier. At minimum, at minimum, every verb must have that. The classifier will pop up right before the verb root, right after the subject if there is one. And we'll start with this. And we'll come back to this a whole bunch. We'll keep thinking about it. I'll go over a few things right now. Every verb, the classifier will belong to one of these four groups. Zero, S, L, S, H. It cannot switch groups. If it does, that's how you make a new verb. It's a different verb if the classifier group changes. So once it has a group, like if we say, yuck a, and how, what does that mean, yuck a? It's good. So then you hear the ya right on the front. That's how you could find what classifier it is. What about shitzin? What does that mean? Shitzin, it's strong. Find the classifier on this chart? Plus I. <laughs> right? So it's an L classifier. So the first thing is what group does it belong to? It will be if it's if it's in that group, most commonly it'll be one thing or the other. So if they say that the verb to know has an S classifier, so it's gonna be sa or si. To love has an S classifier. Sa or se, ich, se, chan. It's right there in the middle, se. So the first thing is the groups. The groups kind of have meaning and function. Most common is the zero. Way more verbs that are zero than anything else. It's kind of the default, it's, it's there, it's like step one, we'll do a zero. Sometimes it will switch to either S or L to say, it's not just that way, somebody made it that way. Yuck A, it's good. Yishak A, you made it better. Yanik, sick. Yisanik, you got them sick. So sometimes there's a difference there between like it didn't just happen, somebody did it. The other thing, the S group, <clears throat> It's all about categories, classifying information. Yati, it is. It, it's, it is that way, kind of. City, it's one of those. That's why you say, Shukach adich chatsiti. Chatin, I see this thing. Ichsitin, I see you. You're a specific thing. So the S does a lot of stuff with doing some sort of category, right? The L, and this isn't every single time, right? But the L has to do with, like, quite often something having a thing. For example, somebody built a house. Hit. Their crest is the killer whale. Keat. Killer whale has a big dorsal fin. Goosh. So they call that shigushi hit. 
the house with a dorsal fin. If I had a hat with big Mickey Mouse ears, it's a hat with ears. If the weather has clouds, right? So that's the L does that. Oh, it, it has something? Yeah. This okay. shirt has arms. Cut the arms off. I'll be mad at you. It's a expensive shirt. But then it would be no arms. Kesh ush jin. Or a vest also, right? Shjini. No arms. It's a vest. Um, is the the SH is to itself type of thing? That's a different SH. Oh, okay, it's, never mind. It's not the classifier. That is a good observation. On a pattern. <laughs> the SH is the most rare. It's like the albino classifier. I don't, I don't know what to call it. Like, it's so rare. Like, oh, look at the SH classifier, right? And it's usually with things that people don't really like. That's the only, but like, it's not like that every time, but it's like, it generally has this meaning. And that helps you to sort of see how verbs work. And the way verbs work in Tlingit is a very big, complicated thing, but it's completely understandable. We just take bite-sized chunks. Someone said classifier, so I brought out the chart. We're not going to deal with, well, we'll do, okay. This plus I thing, what does that mean? That means every classifier, I think, has a natural state. Zero, sa, sha, sha. That's why there's no color there. That's what they are. That's how they were born. You add the letter I, the most common reason is to say it happened. It happened. Everything that is that way, yuck, a, it is that way, it's gotta be plus I. Chitzin. I yachawe. Huh? Like I yachawe. Ah. It, it, or or yechayati. Right. Yati. It is that way, right? Tudzati. It exists. Shukachadichsati. They are that, right? Atwudjakain. They jumped around. If it happened or if it is that way, and think, just keep in mind, always keep in mind, think that language doesn't really care when it happened. The thing it cares about is did it happen or not? That's the driving logic of the language. Doesn't mean we don't care about time. And some people came among us like, they even change their verbs for time. They're simple. Like, no, man, we got something just way different. And you judge us too quickly. So plus I means it happened. But plus I could also mean it could potentially happen. <laughs> okay, but those are the two reasons it goes plus I. The potential things are big beastly things, right? So you could say, I slept. I can't sleep. Those are the classifiers the same for that. So that's the only thing the I does. That's the only thing you have to remember. You only put it in this plus I form if you're saying happened or potentially would happen. That's all it does. It just has a grammatical function. It, is, it isn't even that complicated. Now that you can add the letter D to it for kind of two main reasons. One we call middle voice does it to the self. So I can say, I see some, I see this thing. It's not a specific thing. I see you, you specific thing. I see myself, like in the Zoom thing or whatever it is. So the D will be there in, in the classifier. So it's like you have a little switch. Turn on the I switch because it happened. Turn on the D switch because it's doing it to itself. So in the chart, when it intersects, wait, I don't even know if it intersects. So wait, mm, which one? Is it just the Z that is 
happening to a specific thing? It's ze if it's happening to itself. Oh. But also okay. keep in like, so if you had like, it's not a good thing to say. You sound very conceited if you say it. I love myself. And that's not like, I take care of myself and I value myself. It's like, I'm just so in love with myself, right? You are full of it, right? Full of yourself. And, um, but some verbs are just naturally plus D. To exist is a plus D verb. There's a whole bunch of them that are plus D. And you just have to, they just have this thing where you, if you reach this state, something in you really sort of changes, is how I like to think of it. Um, but, or like, Ichsechan, I love you. Chet Isechan, you love me. Wush Tudzechan, we love each other. Anytime whoosh or wooch pops up right before the verb or the sh right before the verb, that will trigger the plus D. And it gets a little more complicated than that, but we will walk through all of it. Don't worry. The last thing the plus D can do is some verbs have an object and they can go plus D to kick the object out of there, which is complicated. So if someone says, what are you doing? I'm reading this book. It's a book I wrote on my hands. Right? But if you say, what are you doing? I'm reading. It's not talking about a thing. Okay, now that everybody fully understands the classifier, we'll move on. But we'll come back. We come back to it, back to it, back to it. Once we see example after example after example, it makes sense. My advice now is just look, as you look at a verb, if you're reading stuff, like, the wonderful narratives in Hashuka and Gagiu um, Dushat and Hatu Naguyis. Say, oh, there's a verb. Let me circle it. Let me highlight the verb root. Let me highlight the classifier in a different color. And then maybe I'll, like, hey, that's plus I. Cool. It looks like it's got, the, and you could look at this chart and say D, I, all that stuff. Okay, yeah. I keep them short, but we'll keep coming back to it. Somebody read this for us? Khan uwa nuk ach yeet. Tesluwe du tuwa ushku shaw du tha shi. Tulchish. Go one sentence at a time. Who got here? My son got angry. My son is angry or got angry. Classifier as yeah, in case you're wondering. On. Uh, you can also say, hint. He got grumpy. Grumpy is different than angry. My son is angry. Here's another verb. This could be right now and this could be yesterday. That's just how Shinget works. And it's not, the way a language functions has nothing to do with the intelligence of a people. It's just perspective. I really don't like people who talk about, like, try to rank languages in terms of complexity. I was in Hawaii. I knew Hawaiian at that time. And, uh, I was visiting with a friend who, sp who speaks the Miami language, which is a wonderful story because they had no speakers for like a hundred some years. And now they have speakers that they brought their language back. It's amazing. I was talking to this guy. I was like so excited to meet him because I'd read about him and read some of their work, his family's work. And I went to go drop some stuff off in my hotel room and I came back. We're sitting in the bar of the hotel. And by the, by the time I came back, someone else was talking to him and was someone who was, we were there for like some language functions and this guy was not like part of that group. <clears throat> and he was saying how he just moved to Hawaii. And he's like, Hawaiian's like such an easy language. You could learn it like a weekend. So I got mad. So then I said, oh, you speak Hawaiian? That's really cool. We should, let's speak some Hawaiian then. I really want to keep practicing. And he said, oh no, I don't speak Hawaiian. 
I said, oh, well, you must speak Hawaiian if you said it's easy to learn how to speak Hawaiian, because how else would you know? And I said, well, yes. But Tlingit doesn't, just because it doesn't change its verbs for time, it doesn't have anything to do with the complexity of the people. Because the language is it's plenty hard, plenty complex, it's fine. My son is mad. Or maybe we know something about, they knew, we knew something about time that they didn't. Yeah, right? It's just different perspective. He doesn't want to cut cut his hair. He doesn't want his hair cut. Oh, I thought I was making that up. <clears throat> so yeah, you do have a fourth person right there. There are some case like everybody. What's the word for scissors? Anybody know? Kasha kasha. So you got person, head, cut. It's not a head cutter. It's not a head that cuts. It's cutting hair. We say shakash. We're not talking about cutting heads. We're talking about cutting hair. That's how that stuff works. Okay. Sheesh. We'll come back to that. But now we're just going to change gears and run through some, some things here. Okay, <clears throat> back to uh, our beginning Tlingit review. I think we did this already. We left off right about here. Okay, so asking this question, what is Dak uh, doing? And it's gotta this has gotta be paired with sa. Da ah. What name? Which or how many? What what is it called? So if I said Dak ah sa it to Which one do you want? Which one do you want? So dak ah is which one? It's not what, it's not how it's which one. So you could you could dock a whole bunch of stuff. That means there's a limited set, right? Which one of these is red, right? Which one of these papers is yours? Which one of those women is your mother? It's always it's a limited set. It's always a limited set. So to say this all together, you say, "Dak a nach sa isiti." Dak a nach sa isiti. Dak a nach sa isiti. When you're asking someone that, you're asking, "What is your clan?" So na. That's the noun that's getting this thing attached. So, coming back to that classifier, city. So the verb city requires, it usually needs this underline X right before the verb attached to a noun. People would try it as recklessly. These Russians are coming towards Raven's house. Let them be stone. And they turn to stone. If you go to Dry Bay, you see a, a rock. It looks a lot like a boat with oars sticking out of it, because that's what it was. Raven turned him to stone. So here, you could put a clan right there. You could put a moiety right there. You could put a nationality right there. You could say Iranian chatsati. I am Iranian. You can also put a, a career. I'm a teacher. 
they could be some sort of like uh, it's a group of things, right? Now, uh, I'm an alcoholic, right? I'm a nice person, right? So you, you're just becoming one of these things, right? That's what that's what this says. So here, whatever the clan is. So if the clan was nanya ayi, nanya ayi, So that underline X goes right on. So here you can have, you know, it's crazy. Here's the inside scoop. Hold on. I started the recording. That's not for everybody to know. Okay. Coach. Coach. For inland speakers, they will say coach. Coach. You put an underlying consonant on either side of this long O, it'll switch to O when you're up when you're in Tesson or Car Cross. And for some speakers in Klukwan, they'll say Adeya na Kuch. Kuch, Kuch, instead of Kuch. Chak. This is how you recognize your father's people. If you're ever teaching people about introductions, <clears throat> lineages can be complicated. So I always recommend letting people know, use what you want. You don't have to tell us anything. Dad was never there. You don't have to say anything about it in public. It's complicated. You don't have to say it. Same moiety. You don't have to, but you can. But this is your father's people. Someone was standing up and introducing themselves, and they said something like, Kagwantan Chatsati, Coast Guard Yedi. I was like, that's funny, right? Or someone else, they're introducing themselves, Elvis Dechan, right? So Dechan, so you're always what your mother is from a Shingit perspective. Right, I know that family histories are complicated. Don't share anything that's uncomfortable to you unless you want to, right? It's always up to you. But the Dechan would usually be your mother's father or your father's father, right? Because your father's mother's side is still going to be your father's people. Your mother's mother's side is just going to be you, your people, right? So when you say Dechan, you're usually talking about your mother's father. So like, I'm Shukach Adi, Shukach Adi is my mother. Dakshawidi would be my mother's father. I am Dakshawidi Dachchan. Dakanuku. 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 messed up. Okay. So Dakanuku is your mother's mother's father. Their clan, right? So, like, let's say your Shuknach uh, Adi. Mother's Tlipnech Adi, her mother's Tlipnech Adi, but her father, Shangu Kedi, your Shangu Kedi Aya Achdaka Nuku, my mother's mother's father. Nakahiti, 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 Nakahiti. So I think there's one that's not in here. So when you talk about the clan house, right? And again, like not everybody has this knowledge, so it's okay. You just if you're doing these introductions, share what you want to share. But you could say like yeshit, you do a sock ha nakahiti. Yeshit aya ha nakahiti. You could also say, so yeshit, if you're that's the house, in the context of introducing yourself. I could say, So you could also say the name of the house, from the inside of that house. That's all it means. So then this chapter also introduces like to say, like, okay, well, we've got to fill some fill-in-the-blank things. 
And what we are practicing with this is saying, Yuchat duasak, you it duasak, wasat duasak, right? So we're, we're changing the pronouns here. So I could say, Yuchat duasak, I am called. You it duasak, you are called. You duasak, they are called, right? So then you've got another thing with a blank on either side. So then this shows you down here, name called kinship term. Right, so here you could say, Tadja, you do a sock, ach yeet. My son is called Tadja. So now you can talk about, and you can walk through whole family trees, have big discussions. A lot of elders, like once they see that you can speak Klingit, they'll just want to start talking, who's your people? Because they want to put you into their own sense of how everybody's related. It will switch. So see this do wasak, the classifier is ya. When you switch here, it should go to you do sagen. Classifier reverse to zero because it's not that way anymore. Un or in is a decessive suffix, means used to, but not anymore. So I could say chasaku, I know it. Chasaku, I knew it, but not anymore. You also say ye du sagun. What's that? Ye du sagun. Yeah, so if you could say ye du sagun if the name is separate, if the name does not appear directly before the verb. So name you du sagun, name somewhere else, ye du sagun. For example, I might say, Gushtahin, ya achlich, achla du ish, you du So I've put extra information in there to separate the, the name, or I could say, achlich owe, ye du sagen, gushtahin. So if the name comes after the verb, it's ye. If the name comes right before the verb, it's you. This is something I think that goes into this category of things that are drifting away from us a little bit. People just start using ye and you just kind of interchangeably, or they'll just stick with one. Like, I'll just say ye every time. But the, the rule here, the name is right before the verb, it's you. If anything separates it, or if it goes to the other side of the verb, it'll be ye. Even if the ge separates it? No, the ge won't. won't. Okay. Same with give way. Okay. You'll see that in stories. Give way is like, perhaps, maybe, okay. is it? Well, I was going to say, and that's basically meaning that uh, that person is passed away or, you know, not with us anymore, basically, right? That's what they say. Yeah. And so if I hear Dusagan, I will just assume that person passed away. Some people don't like to say that because they say, I still call them that. And I'm not going to, that's totally fine. I've also heard a speaker say, ach ish yi yi, which would mean the one who used to be my father, but isn't anymore. Right? And so th there's everybody, you can have your different ways to talk about it because people, people passing away is a big deal. So talk about it the way you want. But the other thing is, you shouldn't really be saying do wa sagan. It should switch back, you know, that classifier should, but I hear people say that all the time, so it's fine. Good a quan sawe wa eh. Good a sawe wa eh. Good a quan sawe You could say da quan You could say that too. Like, I per, I like to say quan awe uhan. But they're, they're like, with all of this stuff, none of this stuff is telling you this is the only way to say it. Right? The whole intention of this chapter, when I wrote it, though, was because I was hearing people go, ayachet, 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 right? So I'd say, like, chutquan ayachet. It's not wrong, but it's like, you know, if you said, chakwai ayachet, I am skagway. It's just, there's a little bit of a logical disconnect there sometimes, where it's sort of like, 
we could use a little bit more language to kind of push this along. I heard um, Selena, she would say that, she, I think it was her, she would say she didn't like to hear ayachet, 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 because it was like, you're talking about yourself too much. Mm -hmm. And also like, once you start introducing yourself, people, once you start this whole thing, I am now everybody knows I'm talking about myself. So I could just say, I don't have to say at all or and so, but it's, it depends on the context too. Like, and the other thing, there's nothing wrong with people standing up and telling everybody who you are. But I did notice a thing where that became sort of the symbol of the language learner is they would stand up in front of people and introduce themselves. And it was really neat, but it was also like long time ago, people you know, say something, go say something about the moment. But you know, I want to push people towards language use and it's still use if you're introducing yourself, but have a topic. Okay. Where were you born? Guksakizati. Guksakizati. And you got two, well, there's two, well, you could say khatkudzati, or you could say, uh, so you pick a place, shkagwig, uh, yakdad, uh, Portland, Whatever it is. Kuchziti. 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 Kuchsaye iyeti. Now, where are we going to be? Kunak yehatyeti. Kunak yehatyeti. Guksa kiyu. Guksa kiyu. Sit kak kucha u. Sit kak kucha u. Sit kak kucha u. Sit kak So then uh, we go through a list of common place names. Uh, so one is uh, Yakutat. Which is most commonly Yakdat, Shkakwe, Kakwan, Deshu, Huna, Shitka, Ak, 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 Angun, Angun. Kiech, Sitka, Sitka, Kachan Ak, Kachan Ak, Kichan, Kichan, Shawak, Shawak. Anybody happens to tell you Kichan comes from the Simshian language? It's not true. Shan Seat. If anybody tells you the word shing, it comes from the Sibchen language. It is also not true. I heard that one for the git. I got a lot of Hebrew. Sibchen people, but we have named ourselves and we have named our lands as well. Isn't it from Israel or something like that? I think that's what <laughs> You might be onto something. I'm pretty sure that I've heard that somewhere. <clears throat> Day Sheen. So with place names too, like sometimes like we get into some things like I have heard three distinctly different things about car cross. All three of these things I've heard from high-level fluency elders 
who are from there. All three of them said it differently, explained it differently. So sometimes we get into these areas where it's like, go with the one that feels right to you. Or, you know, some of them, I'm like, I'm not going to make a decision on those. But I've heard them, you know, and so you'll get that too with um, some of the names do come from perhaps other places. So Yakutat and Chachayik and Kashyach, they probably all come from Iyak, right? And so, but then I don't want to cause any problems though, or ruffle anybody's feathers because I do know someone who came here and told us we're all Iyak anyways. So, so, always, so we're Iyak and then we're named by Simshan and then our language comes from Hebrew. So, dang it, it's getting erased again. Okay, Quan, there's a limited number of them. We're probably going to, there's a really interesting conversation uh, for the folks from Petersburg because they want to be referred to as Sitka Quan. I said, well, you're the people, so, okay. But these are the ones that I know of that have been documented before. Atlein Kwan. Ak Kwan. Ak Kwan. Deslin Kwan. Deslin Kwan. Kashyak Kwan. Kashyak Kwan. Kunahu Kwan. Kunahu Kwan. Kenya Kwan. Kenya Kwan. Jishkat Kwan. Jishkat Kwan. Kuyu Kwan. Kwan, <laughs> Tant a quan, Tant a quan, Ta quan, Ta quan, 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 Goodness, Is that an underlined L? Up, up further for some reason? Up on, just a little further up here. A scene. Oh, yeah. Is that a, is that a new, uh, <coughs> I don't know. What, tell me about that, or maybe not. Okay. Uh, why is that there? So we do have an underline N. Okay, I don't know why that's there. Okay. Is lean. Okay. I think I know what this is. So there's a few things that we're trying to sort of figure out what to do with. One of them is there are clearly voiced L's in borrowed words. For example, there is a fish in the rivers, in the lakes in the interior called Daleyi. And there are two fully high fluency speakers from long ago that very clearly used a voice L in the place of an N. So some folks are saying, let's make an L with an underline, which I think was my conceit here to someone who was reviewing this workbook, who has a lot of power. Uh, but when we're working on the Raven book, and I don't know how they're going to publish it in the future, but we would hear Susie James. So what's an octopus called in Shingit? Knock. 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 So in this story, someone's saying, come here, octopus, and how would you say that? Listen to this story. She very, very clearly says, so we would write that as an N with an underline, which is, we're having a big meeting of the linguists. I'm not entirely looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the resolutions. 
and I'm going to propose an N with an underline. So that would be des lean, which some people do say. Some people say des lean. And then there's a, oh, a recording of a really old speaker who was there, and he'd say des lean. S-L-S. OK. So if that's in there, then would that make sense to have a sound? I mean, if you're going to do that, then within the sounds that are in the beginning parts of the pages, um, to have another section that has an example of that word in it, so that once it gets through the workbook, mm -hmm. somebody doesn't say, well, geez, is this a typo? Or maybe, um, I don't know. And maybe maybe I missed it, but I, I don't remember seeing anything about an underlined L previous to this point. So right there, <clears throat> it's an underlined N. So it does, oops, I don't think I'm sharing my screen. But, there are people who are linguists who get to review things, and sometimes they have the last say on how things go. I would say this should be an N with an underline because we see a pattern where there's a switch. Mm -hmm. My great-grandfather, we would say, Uhan, Uhan Aya, it's us. He would, I heard him on the recording, Uha Laya. And it's just a sound switch. It's very uncommon, but we do know it existed. And so, because that's that's where we see it, and when we we worked on a whole bunch of Susie James stuff, she did it all the time, she did it all the time, and so we would say, oh well, most people say it with an N, so we'll make it an N with an underline. So, but it's also it's a rare thing. It's also a very rare thing. But in just in terms of like when people see it, that's what they're that's what they're saying. Maybe that implies that that quinquet n that coming is further back than this, which is easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, because that's a no, no. That's not a big switch for your tongue. Yeah. Uh, so over the weekend, let's see. Last weekend you did Akhtatzin. Maybe listen to it again, and try to write two sentences of your own about that story that you're not just pulling from the story but just have two things to say about that story Cyril George Kashkawu telling the Akhtat scene story and, and it doesn't have to be about it but why don't you come on Tuesday with two sentences you have written that are inspired by Akhtat scene Responding to him telling Akhtatsin, um, he was a beloved, incredible person, and uh, I'm sure he would be happy to know that you wrote two sentences inspired by him. In Shinget, okay. yes, yeah, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> not like come back, but that was pretty cool, right? Like, that's not your sentence, so. <laughs> Somebody did ask me, they're like, how do you say it, Shinget? School is cool. I was like, oh, come on. We have to say something different because it has to come from thing. It can't always be translating things in English all the time. Okay. Finish G, Shuhan. Anything else before we go? I was wondering if um, if I forget the what the homework is, where do I find that? That's a good question. <laughs> okay. Almost out of luck. <laughs> um, okay, I will I will make a note on Clinket Lang on our class webpage. So it says handouts. Now there'll be something underneath it that says Skunyejani. I will remember it. I will remember to do that tonight. <laughs> 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 that looked real confident. Siri. <laughs> Sometimes I say hidi, and then Siri's like, what? Okay. Good to see you, Han. Do you have a closet?